Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I thank you very much for having associated the Embassy of the Kingdom of Morocco to participate to your symposium. And I seize this opportunity to express my gratitude to Mr. Don Fried and to all of his uh, staff uh, uh, in the, the ICD. My intervention is focused on Moroccan cultural diplomacy in the African framework. Before to go on, let me address some basis and values of Moroccan cultural diplomacy, which, beside the classical means of diplomacy, have strengthened action laid by the state in several fields. As it is well known, Morocco is a country with multi-ethnic society and a rich culture, civilization, etiquette, and the great history of above 2,000 years of civilization and more than 14 centuries of the creation of independent states. Its region in Morocco possesses its own uniqueness, which contribute to the national culture, Morocco has set among its top priorities the protection of its diversity and the preservation of its cultural heritage. At its stage of its history, which is very rich and values, Morocco has successfully dealt with the challenges to build a good image in international opinion, the image of modern state, a model of moderation and tolerance. In exploring the meaning of the term of cultural diplomacy, it has been proved that Morocco had used it in practice before it was established like a specific field of activities. According to several political definitions, Cultural diplomacy is described as the initiation or facilitation of the exchange of ideas, values, traditions, and other aspects of culture of identity to order, uh, in order to promote national interests, build relationships, or enhance socio-cultural understanding in short, cultural diplomacy reveals the soul of a nation. And despite the recent establishment of the term cultural diplomacy, evidence of its practice can be seen throughout history and has existed for centuries. Explorers, traders, teachers, and artists can be, can be all considered living examples of informal ambassadors or early cultural diplomats. Obviously, Moroccan history is full of good, good examples of this practice, and I can quote some, some cases in the following. The establishment of regular Ted Rood, for example, between Marrakesh and Tombouctou and other cities in the south of Af in Africa has enabled frequent exchange of information and cultural gifts between traders and government representatives for a long time in the past. I can give another example with which concern two explorers and traders who illustrated the same meaning, Ibn Battuta a famous Moroccan traveler known for his extensive travels. Over a period of 30 years, he visited most of the known Islamic world, including North Africa, the Horn of Africa, West Africa, a distance surpassing the near, his near contemporary Marco Polo. The second Moroccan explorer and ambassador is Hassan Louazan, well known in Europe under the name of Leo Africanos. He was an erudite explorer who was captured by Sicilian 
pirates and offered to Pope Leo, to whom he wrote his famous book, Description of Africa. This book was the first and unique source at that epoch on African history and geography and has inspired a lot of European explorers and travelers. In the field of architectural works and interculturality, I quote, for example, the foundation of the city of Gibraltar by Moroccan dynasty al muhad who had governed North Africa and Iberian Peninsula in the 12th century. They had in mind that the city of Gibraltar served as a link between the African and European continents. But I could not neglect to address briefly the major component of Moroccan culture and civilization, which are tools of cultural diplomacy, such as music, literature, clothing, cooking, and foods, which are in their self very rich registers, and they constitute together the Moroccan safe, tangible, and intangible cultural heritage. About writing and books, we can safely say that, the Morocco, that Morocco has a rich and varied heritage. In this respect, the story holds that the vast library Esquarial in, in Spain contains a large number of books from Morocco. Without forgetting to mention, of course, thousands of manuscripts in various fields of knowledge found in several regions of Morocco and also in some cities in Mauritania, Senegal, or Mali, for example. In short, its component of cult Moroccan culture is a summary of its evolution over time and its interaction with others. According to the known political aphorism, indicating that policy of a uh, nation is dictated by, by its uh, geography. Let's observe if this applies to, to Morocco. Morocco is an Atlantic and Mediterranean nation. It is essentially an Arab and Muslim country, the leader of Sunni Malikite countries in its region. Its Malikite doctrine radiates in the Maghreb and, and Africa. And all these parameters have enabled Morocco to establish old and close relationships, especially with African Muslim countries, where the king, commander of the faithful Amir al muminin is particularly respected. Morocco is at the hinge location between the north and the south, the west and the east, at the gates of Europe and Africa. It is a bridge between two continents, land transit. It has always been a place of economical, cultural, and religion exchanges of great importance. Their geopolitical constant advantage explain the vitality of the Moroccan diplomacy. Morocco, which is the only nation state area for more than 12 centuries, it is also the only country in the Maghreb that has had for centuries all the relation with sub-Saharan countries. That is why Morocco has developed a typical African policy, which is one of the pillars of Moroccan diplomacy. Africa is the strategic dimension of the kingdom. Since the ancient caravan trade, the Islamization of the countries located in the south of the Sahara has helped to force strong human and spiritual relationship between Morocco and some African countries. Therefore, as soon it, it, it regains its independence in 1955, Morocco has attached great importance to its African rela relations. Morocco has set Africa as a top priority of its foreign policy. This fact is manifested by the frequency, the frequency 
and density of diplomatic tours of His Majesty the King Mohammed VI to some sub-Saharan countries like Mali, Gabon, Côte d'Ivoire, and Guinea Conakry. These tours were mar marked by their overall characters, including social, economical, strategic, cultural, and religious fields. As it is aware of its geopolitical importance of that region, the reinforcement of Moroccan position in Africa remains essential as it could offer the kingdom both economic, diplomatic, and religious dynamism in the region. Morocco has a significant level of trust on the regional and African sense as on the international sense because it is very involved in the fight against extremism, the extremism deviation, and the radicalism. In many countries, this level of trust is reinforced by the religious relation. Indeed, it is from Morocco that Islam has penetrated the African region, usually practicing Malikit rites. In a move to promote tolerance and help rebuild Mali, Morocco will provide training to 500 imam, imams from the war-torn country. The new direction of the Moroccan foreign policy based in particular on the suit suit cooperation, give a new impetus to bilateral cooperation, especially in the training of foreign managers in Moroccan higher public establishments. Indeed, Morocco has become favorite destination for foreign students, mostly from sub-Saharan Africa. According to official source, the total number of foreign students registered is around 9,000, including 7,500 scholarships since the creation of the Moroccan Agency for International Cooperation in 1986. Nearly 21,000 foreign students studied in our country, among them 13,900 students come from Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end, I seize this opportunity to wish you every success in your activity, and I thank, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Now we are ready for a few questions. Yes, please, uh, if you have a question, I will uh, answer in French. Yes, okay. uh, we, uh, we will get it. Uh, just a second, we need another microphone. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for your inspiring paper regarding Moroccan employment of cultural diplomacy in Africa. As much as I appreciate this uh, paper, I have two questions. In the course of your lecture, you said that Africa is the center <coughs> of Morocco's foreign policy. It is the pri in it, it it's one of the priorities. In the priorities, one of the yes. priorities of yes. Moroccan foreign policy. Yes. Now I want to ask whether Morocco still abide by that principle. Because what occurs to me is on the issue of Western Sahara and Morocco. I can remember that between 1984-85, Morocco had to excuse herself from the then Organization of African Unity mm. because of the recognition of Western Sahara as a sovereign state. Now, that's your position. Is it based on the concept of cultural identism or cultural diplomacy? That is one question. Mm -hmm. Then my second question is that is Morocco a part of Africa? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.
Yes, okay, 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 okay. Uh, by one, by one by one, okay. Okay. Uh, I am going to answer you in French, okay? Okay. Euh, tout d'abord, je vous remercie pour votre question. Il concerne normalement, à mon niveau, je suis le conseiller culturel et je, je réponds euh, à peu près dans le domaine qui, qui est de mon ressort. Alors, mais pour vous donner euh, une réponse un peu qui approche vos, vos attentes, le Maroc a été parmi les, les pionniers, les pays fondateurs de l'Union européenne en 1961. C'était lors de, du congrès de Casablanca, la conférence de Casablanca. Alors, et quand le, le, le problème du, du Sahara que vous, que vous, vous considérez comme un, un problème euh, international, pour le Maroc, ce n'est pas un problème parce que le Maroc a, a été colonisé par deux, trois, deux, trois systèmes de colonisation. OK, OK. Ah, OK. Je ne peux pas tout faire en même temps, sinon... Okay. Um, so I'll try my best. Um, first of all, uh, Dr. Kalaki wanted to thank you for your question and said that it, it was um, exactly within his area of competence as he is the, the counselor, counselor, cultural yes, counselor, yes. cultural um, attaché. Um, and so this is exactly within his area of expertise. Um, and if I remember correctly, um, The, the first point was that uh, Morocco was one of the pioneers in founding, in helping found the European Union, um, thanks to the, hmm? uh, yeah, thanks to the Casablanca Conference of 1961, um, and that uh, Morocco had been, I'm not sure if the term would be subjugated, but had been um, witness of three different colonization systems, and as such, th uh, this was not. I can't remember what was not an issue for Morocco, but that was a point made. Um, is that... Okay. Uh, ça va? <laughs> eh, oui, 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 effectivement. Et dans le même, le, le, le même ordre d'idée, le Maroc, eh, quand il a accédé à son indépendance, il a fait de mon mieux pour accompagner et soutenir les pays sous colonisation à, à l'époque, euh, à partir des années 50, à la mi-50 et à partir de, des années 60 et 70. Tout au long de, sa, de son cheminement après l'indépendance politique, il a aidé et soutenu ses, les, pays, les pays africains qu'il considère comme ses propres euh, partenaires. Et d'ailleurs, j'aimerais bien signaler ici en, en, en revenant à l'histoire, il y a une dynastie almorabite, les, les, les almorabites, almorabitines, euh, qui, euh, qui ont gouverné le Maroc pendant le XIe siècle et aussi la, la péninsule ibérique. Ils ont leur particularité qui est masquée un peu par l'histoire, c'est qu'ils ont été scindés en deux États. Une qui avait pour vocation le sud de l'Afrique, ça veut dire le sud du Sahara, il, est, il a constitué une entité politique qui n'a pas été encore étudiée et explorée par les historiens. Et la branche du Nord qui a gouverné le Maroc, et le, le, ça veut dire l'Afrique du Nord et le, 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 la péninsule ibérique. Et, OK <rire> um, So you'll have to bear with me for this one. Um, so... Um, first of all, um, the, Dr. Kalaki wanted to um, make sure that we all know that the Morocco, uh, from its process of getting independent from co the colonizers in the mid-50s, throughout the 60s and 70s, and all along it, this sort of uh, path away from colonization, um, Morocco did its very best to help um, similar countries who had experienced a similar fate. Um, and um, Dr. Kalaki wished to come back to a historical period um, We stopped before I know, you know um, what the relevance of that period is to the context, but I will say that um, he wanted to say that the, there was a, a dynasty whose name I'm afraid... Al Morabit. Here we go. Um, that governed uh, Morocco and the um, Iberic pen Peninsula during the 11th century. Um, and the, what was particular about that dynasty, if I understood correctly, was that the states that were under its rule were then divided in two. Um, so the northern branch, which would correspond, I suppose, to Morocco and uh, how that was governed. Um, and, this, um, and this whole political entity has not as of yet been studied by historians. 
And I think that's where we stopped. Et je vais me limiter en répondant à une partie parce que je n'ai pas les, les, la, les, 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 la réponse entière. Je vais vous répondre concernant un principe qui concerne l'Union africaine, l'unité Afri euh, africaine au début de, son, de, son, de, son, de sa création vers les années 60 et jusqu'à un moment après le, le retrait du Maroc, parce que l'Union africaine, euh, selon la vision marocaine, politique marocaine, a enfreint le principe, le principe qui est dans sa sarte. C'est par réaction à une position politique qui s'est retirée, en voyant que l'Union africaine a enfreint et violé la Sarthe, la Sarthe euh, africaine, en, en, en faisant venir un, un membre euh, qui, qui n'a pas la, 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 les paramètres d'un État. Ok. Ok. Sinon, je m'en sors pas trop. Euh, que, juste, vous pouvez me dire de quel État est-ce que vous allez parler Je pas. C'est concernant le, le conflit de, de, ça veut dire du, du Sahara. Sahara. C'était, oui. Okay, thanks. Um, so, uh, Dr. Uh, Kaliki says he does not, unfortunately, have the time to answer to the completeness of that question, whole, complete, uh, all of that question, uh, because it's quite a complex issue. So, he would like to concentrate on the Af African Union um, unity since the 60s. Um, and he says that the official position of the Moroccan government is that the African Union has um, breached the term of its uh, chart. Um, when it, uh, when it allowed a country, uh, a state that isn't one, the Sahara apparently, uh, to uh, join the African Union. Okay, that's all. Vous avez dit que ça vient enfreint la charte, c'est ça Oui, c'est ça. Je ne me suis pas trompé. Non, non, vous ne vous êtes pas trompé. Euh, donc c'est bon Oui, c'est bon. Oui. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's not a question. Uh, I want to add uh, to your interesting uh, presentation that although Morocco is uh, in the far north, but it has a great impact on the uh, continent, especially the western and uh, the east uh, uh, African countries, uh, through the migrants and uh, through the uh, Sufi uh, missions. Um, uh, they raise the Islamic knowledge in these countries And we have in our country a tribe. It is called Moroccan tribe. It is from Morocco. Thank you. D'accord. Je vous remercie pour votre éclaircissement. Il concerne normalement et selon comme je l'ai je l'ai exprimé. J'ai cité un 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 explorateur un comme Ibn Battuta. Son 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 livre qui est essentiel. Il a été traduit dans plusieurs langues. Um, so th first of all, once again, thank you for your question. Um, Dr. Kaliki wishes to um, refer back to the explorer that he uh, talked about um, earlier, um, according, well, and especially about his book that was um, very influential um, in... Ibn Battuta, not, not the description. Ibn um, Battuta. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figured as much, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, and has been essential in that process. Of, uh, uh, dans une grande partie de son livre, de son livre concernant yeah. le, le, le récit de voyage, il a, il a concentré et focalisé son, son livre sur la, le mouvement spirituel joué par des, 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 des hommes de religion et des saints marocains qui se trouvent même en Égypte. Il y a plusieurs saints qui, qui se trouvent, des mausolées qui sont originaires du Maroc et même en, en Palestine. Il y a plusieurs euh, personnes qui ont fait leur... Euh, ils étaient des soufis, ils, ont, ils, ont, ils, se, ils, ont, ils se sont établis euh, dans le, le... que ce soit en Afrique, au Sénégal par exemple, au Mali ou bien euh, en, en Libye et en, euh, en Égypte et même en Palestine. N'hésitez pas à m'interrompre. Oui, d'accord. Ok, ok. Um, and uh, that book was essential because in, um, in the large part um, focused on his travels, um, he, that explorer, whose name I'm incapable of saying, 
um, focused greatly on um, <laughs> religious and spiritual people um, and exchanges of ideas, if I got that correctly, um, with um, in that Sufi community that you mentioned. Um, and so those uh, spiritual uh, persons were um, are were present in Egypt as well, is that what you said? Yes, in uh, Egypt. And Palestine, and in have Pal been also oh, influential yeah. in Mali, Libya. Yes. Uh, and Senegal? Senegal, yes, Senegal? of course, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> in, yeah in sub-Saharan countries. <laughs> yes. Et pour, 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 pour un peu résumer, pour ne pas euh, m'étendre sur... Il y a même, euh, pour le, les Maldives qui se trouvent en Asie, ils ont été, il y a une, un récit qui écrit qu'il y a la personne qui les a fait convertir à l'islam et il s'appelait Abou, Abou Barakat al-Barbari. Euh, euh, Barakat de Amazir. He is coming from Morocco and he, he, he was uh, re, re, living in the Maldives. And the, uh, all the, the, the people were pa pag pa paganists. Uh, okay. Uh, so sim similarly, the same kind of um, travel um, like story um, that uh, this um, that in Mal in the Maldives in Asia, uh, there's a similar story that the people who were converted to Islam, who were initially pagans, uh, were converted by someone from Morocco, whose name is again for me very foreign. Sorry. Abu al Barakat. Do we have other questions? Uh, it's not very culturally related, but I'm interesting. Um, I, I know that tourism in, Mo in Morocco is developing more and more, and I myself was there and really like the country. Do you think that uh, the biggest potential of Moroccan economy lies in tourism? and uh, how the government is approaching uh, in fu like further development of tourism. Thank you. Of tu tourism? Tourism. Uh, uh, tourism. Uh, because I am sorry, uh, le tourisme n'est pas de mon ressort parce qu'il il rentre dans le, 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 le département économie. Mais je vais vous, vous signaler uh, une chose concernant le tourisme. Il y a le, aussi le tourisme spirituel. Le, le, le tourisme spirituel, parce qu'il y a une diaspora, une grande diaspora, que ce soit de, des tariqas, des corporations, tariqas, tizania, euh, euh, ou bien la sédilia, ce sont des corporations religieuses qui ont, qui, qui ont, euh, qui ont été fondées au Maroc. Ils ont, été, ils ont euh, envoyé des délégations qui ont leurs disciples en Afrique euh, subsaharienne. Okay. Um, so, uh, um, Dr. Kaliki just wants to establish that this is not um, his area of expertise. It's um, a qu tourism um, refers, well, it's part of the department for, like, the economic department. Um, but he, he, he could talk, he wishes to talk about uh, spiritual tourism and insists that there is a, a, a quite an important uh, diaspora of um, religious corporations which were founded in Morocco and who have sent delegations throughout sub Saharan Africa. Yes, that's all. Exact. <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, some more questions, maybe? Oh, great, thank you. Uh, I did not quite get the answer to the question uh, my colleague asked. Uh, he wanted to know whether uh, Morocco is still a uh, part of Africa. Uh, and this is uh, the answer. Maybe you, uh, you, you answer, and I didn't get it. But my point now is uh, uh, regarding the spiritual tourism. tourism. I did not get uh, how this operates. What is the mechanism of uh, a spiritual uh, the tourism? Mecha okay. the yes, the of course. Be because um, uh, quand je viens de, de le mentionner, le tourisme, le tourisme spirituel, ça veut dire comme un petit pèlerinage, comme il, il se fait euh, en Europe au, au Moyen Âge et même jusqu'à maintenant, il y a des, des chrétiens qui vont vers des, des, des paroisses où il y a des reliques, des reliques de, de saints ou de, qui ont aidé à la propagation du christianisme. C'est aussi le cas du Maroc parce qu'il y a un lien 
indéfectible entre les, dis les disciples et les adeptes de quelques corporations religieuses et spirituelles, comme je l'ai indiqué. La Sedilia Tariqa, c'est une secte religieuse. Il est islamique, mais il a une, une approche plus populaire. OK. <rire> um, sorry about the lack of professional skills. Um, so, um, the mechanism that you mentioned apparently uh, works kind of similarly to what would happen in Europe in the um, dark, what would you call it? Middle Age, the, the, no, 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 um, the mid, Middle Ages, you know, when like castles and people yeah. like. Uh, what do you call that? Pelerinage. Um, so, yes, yeah, so as. Um, so what we so um, so that would work kind of similarly when people you know came to visit on um, um, pilgrimages. Thank you yeah. on pilgrimages. Um, I'm sorry, it's not my usual vocabulary. I'm afraid. Um, so when Christians you know would go to uh, churches or other sort of religious um, institutions for where relics of saints who had helped you know um, promote the religion had would have had been. And so this is quite similar to what is happening now, apparently, in Morocco with uh, the diaspora that I'm, we mentioned previously, um, who is um, not Christian, but Islamic, but it works on quite a popular level and uh, helps that way dissem disseminate ideas in a way that would have been similar to, that would have echoed, you know, the Middle Ages. Yes, but uh, uh, mais il simplifie l'islam pour ceux qui n'ont pas la, la pratique de l'arabe. Normalement, c'est un islam populaire Il, il, approche, il rapproche un peu le, 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 le corpus religieux de la population qui n'a pas accès à, à, à l'arabe ou à, aux, aux langues classiques pour comprendre un peu le livre saint. Ok. Et la chose principale sur la diaspora c'est qu'ils aident à promouvoir l'islam et à le populariser en simplifiant et en expliquant à des gens qui ne sont pas familiers avec la langue arabe. And so they simplify the corpus of religious texts in a way that is understandable so that um, they can um, promulgate it and like vulgarize it, popularize it. Vulgarize it. Uh, we have time for one more question. Part? Part of work? No, uh, Afri no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, it helps to uh, to to regain uh, another time and to to uh, adhere to to to. Uh, uh, but yes, Morocco is just part of Africa. Yes, mais il attend un peu la situation uh, que la situation que s'éclaire parce qu'il y avait un. Euh, euh, mésentente entre le Maroc et les, les, les pays, c'est sur des principes. Une fois que la situation sera résolue et, et de part et d'autre, et il y a un, une entente sur les principes, le Maroc n'a pas d'objection à regagner l'Union africaine. Bah, normalement, il a, euh, il a noué des relations avec tous les pays, la plupart des pays africains. Um, so um, it is not part of it at the moment because of um, disagreement on core principles. Um, but he uh, believes that this is uh, s that this situation will uh, evolve, and that if it gets resolved, then the Morocco has no fundamental objection uh, to joining, as it has very positive relations with member countries. <laughs>